Hi, everybody. Let's read Mallard Ducks together. Here's our nonfiction reader that's going to be teaching us. So we are going to learn about Mallard Ducks today. All right, in our table of contents in this book, we are going to have, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see better. There we go. We have general information on page one. So just some information about ducks there. The male, hmm, the male. Do you know if that's a boy or a girl? The male is the boy duck. We'll learn about the boy duck, the male, on page two. And the female, which is the girl duck, we'll learn on page three. On page four, we'll learn about babies. On page five, we'll learn about something called migration. Page six is interesting facts. Page seven is the glossary, that page that tells us all of the words that we might not know. Okay, here we go. Page one, called general information. That's just gonna tell us some things about mallard ducks. All right, you know, before we get started, let's think about things that we already do know about ducks. What do you know about ducks? I know that they like to live by ponds. I know that I see them in my backyard. Mm, mallard ducks. I know that they have webbed feet. I know they have beaks and feathers and wings. I know they say quack. I know they waddle when they walk. Do you know anything else about mallard ducks? I know that they like to eat bread when I feed them bread in my backyard. Although, did you know it's not very good for ducks to give them bread? You're not supposed to feed them. If you're gonna feed ducks, you're supposed to feed them things like seeds. It's better for them. The bread is not very good for them. Although they do like it. All right, here we go, general information. Mallard ducks can be seen hanging around ponds, streams, lakes, and marshes. Uh-oh. No. Sorry, guys. He's actually sleeping. He's just kind of waking up. All right, we're good. Um, before I actually finish reading this page, I wanted to remind you that remember when we read a book about information, and a nonfiction book, we're really thinking about what we're learning. So I just talked about a bunch of things that I already know. So now we're going to read for things that I don't already know new information that I did not already know and I'm gonna underline it with my pencil so that I can keep track of the things that I've learned and you know what we should do I want you to go ahead and get out this page because while I'm underlining facts you can be writing them down I'll show you how to use this page in just a second pause the video to find this and then come back all right so once you found this page that says mallard ducks fact one Fact two, fact three. What you're gonna do is you are going to fold this page in half. Do you see how I did that? I flipped it over so I couldn't see that to the side that I can't see anything really. And I'm folding it, let me zoom out a little bit. I'm folding it the long way. We call this the hot dog way. I'm gonna line up my corners and I'm gonna fold it as best as I can. Okay, now all I can see is mallard ducks Fact one, two, and three, and if I flip it over, I can see a spot for my name. Don't write my name there. Write your own name. Okay, I wrote Miss Moss. Don't write Miss Moss, write your own name. Flip it back over. I'm gonna grab some scissors, and I'm gonna cut just the dotted line. I don't wanna cut this part up at the top that says Mallard Ducks. Just the dotted line, and I'm not, cutting the second page back here. I'm only cutting this first page. Okay, so now when I flip my flaps up, I can write down here on the second page. Go ahead and finish cutting and then come back to the video. Okay, I just folded my little flaps up here. <clears throat> um, now, when I am underlining things in my story, we can write them on here. Now, I might underline some things that maybe you already knew, 
or maybe I don't underline some new learning for you. You can write anything that I read that you didn't already know. It can go under one of your facts as long as you didn't already know it. So your, what you write, doesn't have to match mine. All right, I'm going to read, I'm going to underline some things I didn't know. And if you want to write down the same thing, that's fine. But if you heard something else that you didn't know that you thought was more interesting that you'd rather write down, you can write that down too. Okay, let me go ahead and start over with my reading here. Here we go. Mallard ducks can be seen hanging around ponds, streams, lakes, and marshes. No, well, I already kind of knew that. They are called surface feeding birds. They will duck they will duck their heads underwater to find small fish and insects. They will also find food on land. Mallard ducks are the most popular ducks found in the wild. It is estimated that there are about 10 million adult mallard ducks in North America. Wow, I didn't know there were so many ducks in our country. 10 million adult mallard ducks in North America. I didn't know that. If you want to write that, you're welcome to write that. You could write that under fact one. There's a lot of pages here, so I think I might wait to write something down, okay? But if you would like to write that there are 10 million adult mallard ducks in North America, pause the video, or if you want to write anything up here that you didn't know, pause the video, write it down, and then come back. I'm going to keep going. Okay, now we're going to read about the male. Remember I told you the male is the boy. The male. That's our heading, the male. Male mallard ducks are known as drakes. Oh, that's something I didn't know already. I think I'm going to write that one down. Male mallard ducks are known as drakes. From fall to spring, males have bright green heads and a white ring around their necks. After spring, they will molt the green feathers only for them to return again in the fall. So that means all of their, all of their feathers will fall off and then they'll return before in the fall. Both the males and females, both the males and females have a gland that secretes oil that makes their feathers waterproof. Hmm, what's that word secretes mean? Let's look in the glossary. Discharge from a gland, discharging from a gland. So it just comes out. So it has an oil that comes out of a gland that makes their feathers waterproof. That's pretty cool. That's something else I didn't know. There's a lot of things on this page that I did not know. Okay, I think underneath fact one, I'm going to write male mallard ducks are known as drakes. If you want to write that, you can. If you heard something else that you didn't know and you want to write that down under fact one, you can. So I'm going to fold this back and then underneath here, I'll write male mallard ducks are called, this says are known as, I'm just shorting it to are called, Drakes. Male mallard ducks are called drakes. If you want to continue copying mine, pause the video. I'm going to keep reading. Okay. Here, now we're going to read about the female. The female. Now look at the difference in how the male and the female look. It's said that the male has the white ring around its neck, and even though this isn't in color, it says that it has a bright green head. You've probably seen those ducks before. I know I have. The female looks different. Let's read about her. The female duck, also known as a hen, has mostly brown speckled feathers. Hens are known for going back to where they were born to find a mate. The hen will build a nest out of feathers and twigs after mating season. She will lay a clutch of up to 12 eggs. 
What's a clutch? Hmm. Let's read about what a clutch is. I know it's in the glossary because it's nice and bolded for me. A group of eggs produced by birds, amphibians, or reptiles. Oh, so a clutch is just a group of eggs. So it says she will lay a clutch or a group of up to 12 eggs. She will sit on the eggs for about a month to keep them warm. When the eggs hatch, ducklings will emerge. You know, I knew most of the things on this page. The only thing that I think that I didn't know was that, well, I didn't know that they were called a hen because I thought that hens were like grilled chickens. I didn't know that grilled ducks were also called a hen. The only other thing that I think that I didn't know is that they're known for going back to where they were born to find a mate. I didn't know that either. Okay. Keep reading. I'm not going to write that down on my facts. I still have a few more pages left of information, so I'm going to I'm thinking I'll find some other things that I didn't know. Let's read about babies. Maybe there's something I didn't know about the babies. Oh, look how cute they are. Here's the mommy, I can tell because of her brown speckled feathers. It doesn't have the green head with the white ring. Okay. Mallard ducklings are taken right to the water after they hatch from their eggs. Oh, I didn't know that, that they go right to the water. Isn't that crazy? Could you imagine being born and going straight to the water to learn how to swim? It actually says they know how to swim and feed on day one of their lives. Wow, that's pretty cool. They already know how to swim. They know how to swim and feed or eat on day one of their lives. They will follow their mom around for about two months as they work on learning how to fly. A group of ducklings is called a brood or brood. Drakes have no contact with ducklings. Oh, I did not know that. Drakes, remember the, the boy, the dad is called the drake. Drakes have no contact with ducklings. Sorry guys about Cooper. I'll pick him up if he starts crying harder. All right, I'm gonna write another fact down. I'm going to write that they know how to swim on day one. So fact two, I'm gonna flip it up. And right here, I'm gonna write babies know how to swim on day one. Babies know how to swim on day one. Pause the video if you want to keep copying my writing. Otherwise, I'm going to keep reading. This is called migration. Hmm, do you know what migration is? You might know what that word means already. This says, like many medium-sized birds, mallards fly south for the winter. They fly in the V formation that is popular. The group of mallards that fly together is called a flock. Mallards can fly at speeds of 40 miles an hour. Oh, I didn't know that. Mallards can fly at speeds of 40 miles an hour and cover up to 800 miles in one day. Whoa, that's a long ways. Sometimes the flock will even stop to rest at the same spots year after year. So this V formation that they're talking about, if you've ever seen birds fly in the sky, you've probably seen this before. They like, they form themselves in a V. So there'll be a, a straight line of birds going this way and a straight line of birds going out this way and then maybe just one at the front. So they look like a V, kind of like my hands are doing. And they fly south for the winter. One of the places that they fly for the winter is Florida because it's nice and warm here. Up north, it's cold in winter and they have snow. So the birds come to places where there's no snow. It's called migration. They go there in the winter so that they can stay warm. Okay, that's called migration. Oh, you know what? I was gonna write down my last fact. I think I will write down that mallards can fly at speeds of 40 miles an hour. So let me put down fact two, lift up my third fact. They can fly at 40 miles per hour. 
crazy. That's super fast. That's like as fast as your car going down, um, going down <clears throat> um, Beach Boulevard. Sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> A little slower than going down Beach Boulevard, but not much. Okay, interesting facts. A common nickname for the females, for the female mallard is Susie. Oh, so they're called hens, but sometimes they're called Susie. Mallards may lose up to half of their body weight during the winter migration. Wow, they exercise so much flying so far that they lose half their body weight. That's a lot. The mallard's webbed feet do not have nerves in them, which means that they won't feel when the water is icy cold. Hmm. That's nice for them. Lastly, females lay up to half of their body weight in eggs. Okay, that's a lot of eggs. That's the end of my book. Mm -hmm. I have all three facts filled out. You also should have three facts filled out. If you don't, go listen to the story again so you can get all three facts filled out. Let's talk about a couple of words. First, let's talk about the word hatch. The word hatch means to come out of the egg or to be born from an egg. Okay, maybe you have, I, well, yeah, maybe you have. I have had um, a duck lay its eggs in my front yard in a little in a little like hiding spot behind a bush, and I watched baby birds hatch from their egg. It was pretty cool. They come out of an egg. Another word that you might be less familiar with is the word dither. Everyone say dither. This says a state of excitement or nervousness okay so dither a state of excitement or nervousness have you ever been nervous or excited sometimes people use the word excited but what they really mean is that they're nervous we could ex we could describe this as dither i'm going to give you an example of a time that i was nervous okay when i have to speak in front of a lot of adults even though I'm a teacher and I talk in front of kids all the time, right? I'm not scared to talk in front of you, but for some reason, when I have to talk in front of a bunch of adults, I get a little bit nervous. We could call this dither. Can you think of something that makes you nervous? You don't have to write it down, but I want you to think about it out loud. What makes you nervous? Whatever that is, I want you to pause the video and think about it, and then we can move on. There are lots of things that make me nervous, honestly. Okay, you guys. The last thing we're going to do is our drawing of a mallard duck. Oh, but you know what? I don't have my directions. Hold on one second while I get my directions. While I'm getting that, you can find your page and also find this page that says mallard ducks we're gonna write a fact on there okay there we go i found my page all right here's our duck he's gonna look pretty cute I'm going to hide this for a minute. I just want this page on the top. If you haven't found your pages yet, pause, then come back. All right, so this page is actually going to get turned. I have mine the long way. We're going to turn it so that the head is toward the top left, and you have a long ways over here to draw. Okay. I'm going to grab my gray right here okay so the first thing that we're gonna do is draw a semicircle for the body of the duck so I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna kind of loop this down and up so it almost looks like a semicircle but it gets cut off by the head right there okay that's gonna be the bucks or the ducks body make sure you save some room for the legs Next, we'll draw the legs. We're gonna draw it with two webbed feet. So I'm gonna draw one leg going down here, 
and its foot, I'm gonna extend this one down a little bit further, and its foot, it's gonna have three little toes, three webbed feet, or webbed toes. And I'll draw one more. Okay, there's my two feet. Next, I'll draw the wing. The wing will be in the middle of his body. It's nice and big, kind of curved lines. There's my wing. Next, oh, this is a boy duck. It's a, a drake. I know that because we're drawing the stripe around his neck right there. That's going to be a white stripe. So if you're coloring this when you're done, you're going to leave that white. And we're gonna draw the beak too. You ready? Remember to pause at any time that I go too fast. Okay, so the beak is going to be in his face, obviously. And I'm gonna draw like a big, a little bit of a curved V. Do you see that? It's kind of a sideways curved V. And then watch what I do at the top. It's gonna to go in a little bit. I'm gonna curve it up. It's gonna dip down, dip down. There's a little hump in the middle. There's my beak. And inside this little middle hump here, you see how it's a little bit wavy? I'm gonna draw two, two spots for the nose. And I'm also gonna draw the eyes. I'm not drawing huge eyes. Ducks have pretty small eyes. Okay. Next, we're gonna draw some cute little hair on our duck. Ducks don't really have hair, but our ducks does. All right, and we're gonna draw one more wing. This is gonna be like the wing on the other side. We're just gonna pretend that it's coming up a little bit so we can see both wings. I think this eye is a little bit smaller. And the other one and there we go there's our duck I think he's pretty cute go ahead and color this if you'd like you can pause or if you want to do the writing before you color you could continue with me I'm going to show you what to do for the writing I need to find my scissors I don't know where my scissors are, you guys. I'm going to fold this in half for now because I'm not sure where my scissors are. You can cut this out along the black and then come back. Oh, I found my scissors. Here we go. Okay, there we go. Here's my one writing. You only need one of those. It says mallard ducks. And here we're going to write one fact that we learned about a mallard duck. You have three facts on this right here. You could write down one of these facts if you'd like. Or if there was something that you didn't get to write down that you wanted to write down from this mallard ducks book, you could write down something new that or something else that you didn't write in here. Let's see, I might go back and find something that I didn't know. I think I'll say, hmm, maybe I'll write that the female mallard is called a Susie. I didn't know that, I didn't write that on here. Okay, if you wanna write something you already did, like I said, you can. I'm looking for something new that I haven't already written. So I'm gonna write that the female, a female, remember a female means a girl, a female, practice those finger spaces, mallard,
and I don't quite have room to write the word is right here, so I'll go down to the next line. Is called a Susie, S-U-C-Y. Okay, write my name down here. You don't write my name, you write your own name. Put a little glue at the top of your, at the bottom of your drawing here. Glue it down. And that's it, you guys. Yay, you, you got it done. Happy Thursday. I hope you're having a great day. I'll see you later.